said, if you can't win, wreck someone who can. Exactly. And that was, I, I knew exactly. I wasn't winning that. Why do people not get out of the fast lane? Every right. time I see that picture of you riding around with that big ass fro you're wearing, it, I still get pissed. It was that night I said, preparate, but I didn't say what I wasn't supposed to say, and that's A1. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Real Talk 447. I'm Jeff M. Egg. As always, I'm joined by Ricky Carmichael. But look who we have on the show here today. Uh, probably a rider in Monster Energy Supercross that had more highlights or lowlights, depending on how you look at it, from the last three races ever on, uh, on uh, NBC Sports. Uh, Cameron McAdoo from uh, Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki. Uh, welcome to Real Talk. Yeah, thank you guys for having me on. Um, um, thanks for taking the time to get out of the ice bath because I know that, that that's probably what you're doing the whole time, right? Yeah, I've been uh, doing everything I can to recover. We had a rough week in Atlanta. That's that's all you can really chalk it up to for me. I guess it was just it was it was really tough. Um, a lot of really unfortunate crashes, and and uh, so yeah, we're doing everything we can to to recover as quick as possible. I, I want to just, we'll hop right into it. Uh, and, and you and I talked about this, Cameron, kind of kind of off tape. But um, for all of our viewers and listeners, I, first and foremost, I think you've had an incredible year. Uh, it's your breakout year. Yeah, you had some great rides last year, no doubt. But this year, uh, you have really, really put it together. Um, you know, probably achieving a ton of your goals. Obviously, I'm, you know, I assuming you, the, the championship was the end goal. However, if you look at things at a, in a whole, you had a hell of a year, no doubt. But what, what was, what I was thinking earlier today when I knew you were going to come on is, and Jeff, you might, you might have some questions, but this same question, but what was the difference in our stay in Atlanta? Like, how did it unfold? Like, why does it, to me, it seemed like you were really pushing it there and, and, and kind of riding out of your comfort zone. What was the difference there as opposed to the rest of the season where for the most part, other than that slip up in Dallas, you've been picture perfect. Yeah. Um, I, I really don't like, I really don't know. I think that part of the difference was um, the style of track. I felt like I needed to uh, to ride it a little bit harder to go the the speed. It's a, it was a fa a super fast track and it was wasn't like your regular supercross track. So um, I, I actually kind of struggled to find comfort with it, um, but I still felt like I needed to to obviously push that that level to um, to achieve the results that we wanted. So um, obviously, you know, I felt that in the mud race, uh, that, that, that day in practice, I qualified first, which was the first time I've ever qualified first out of practice. So that was good. I felt pretty good. And then, um, just the way things unfolded, I was way too impatient in the heat race. Um, I didn't expect it to be near as slick as it was. And, and, uh, that caught me off guard as you know, you can see when I, when I crashed on that, the bridge and, uh, then, uh, and the main event, the whoop thing, I, I, uh, just got a little bit sketchy in the whoops and I saved it. And I was actually just going off the track and I was going to try and turn and turn and come back on the track. And I, and I had no clue that I was on the concrete and went down. So those were just kind of two, um, I would say just more dumb mistakes more so. And then the second round, um, I felt like I was riding really good all day, actually uh, qualified, I think second out of practice. And I won my heat race by like 10, 12 seconds. Um, I felt like I was riding really well and I felt uh, pretty calm throughout the day. And, um, and then that, that main event crash was just hectic. Like that was kind of one that really caught me off guard. I even, I, I even rewatch it. And I'm like, man, I don't really, uh, usually when I, when I rewatch some of my crashes and I try and figure out what I did wrong to, to prevent it from happening again. And, and yeah, I, I definitely did something wrong. I, I basically, I misjudged the, the pitch of the kicker on that double, but it was like, it caught me way off guard. So um, that was obviously kind of the turning point of my Atlanta trip that kind of made it me go into almost survival mode. Uh, you know, I was able to finish out the night on the podium, which was, was nice because it kept my championship hopes alive. But then um, the last race uh, Saturday, I, I was, uh, I was really, really sore from, 
from Tuesday still. So I, I, you know, my plan was to do very least amount of laps in practice and just stay minimal to that. And, uh, I was doing the same that doing that. And, um, I felt like I was the few laps that I did do were, were good laps. I mean, I put third fastest lap in and, and then on the very last lap of practice, I just came up just a little bit short on that quad that I had done it multiple times, but, um, it was something that I, could do normally and, and come up short on like that. And I think I would have been fine. And I don't think I expected the the shock that it gave me on my leg and my leg kind of, um, when it took that hard hit, it just, it lost all the strength. And that's kind of why I went off the triple sideways and, and crashed that way. So, uh, I didn't expect that, like obviously under normal circumstances, when, if, if that would have happened on that quad, I would have been just fine. Like I would have just, you know, kind of cased it and run out of it. So um, I would say that was the one that kind of uh, that got me like that. That was a big one. And that was not what I needed to do to stack on top of that last crash. So um, going into the night show of the Atlanta three, I, I, I rode very, very cautious in my heat race just to make sure everything was OK. And I was I was safe to be on the track with everyone. And I, I, I felt like I was. So um, going into the main event. Uh, the first start I had that crash out of the, you know, that first rhythm section, which was honestly part of, um, I doubled in and I think I kind of misjudged whether, you know, styles was going to, to push wide into those tough blocks. And, and that's what happened. Like we landed that double and there was six inches between styles and the tough block. So like that, I ended up, I hit the tough block and it bounced me straight into the track. So that's, um, was crazy unfortunate because unfortunately blows like bounced off my back and and he crashed really hard and and had you know was knocked out and stuff which sucks to see and, and sucks to be a part of um so I'm glad to hear that he's doing better and and uh not severely injured that was pretty scary I had a life flight him and stuff so um then we had a restart and, and I felt like I was in great track position after the restart i but I think I was in fourth and fifth. So, and I, I felt good. Like I felt like I could execute the two sets of loops pretty well all night. And, um, that was going to be important. So I think on like the third lap of the race, um, my teammate Seth and, uh, I don't remember who else it was. They kind of got together right in front of me in the whoops. And I was a couple bike lengths back and I was so committed to skimming them that I was, um, as soon as they kind of were stopped in the middle of the whoops, I had no, no time to really react. And I, I ran right into the back assess, you know, and I actually broke his back fender off. So that, then I, I crashed in the whoops there and, and uh, got back up and I was in, I think seventh. So I think I was still somewhere where I could salvage something. And then um, the last little incident I had with another rider and, and uh, Garrett March banks. Yeah. Yeah, we were stuck for stuck down for a while and, and that that pretty much took me out of it. I was I was dead last by a long ways and my bike was all bent up, but I wasn't gonna quit, that's for sure. So I was able to ride my way back to thirteenth, but that that kind of uh put a big damper on my, my title hopes. Well um I I I remember seeing uh, you had another crash in the I believe it was practice at one of the rounds also because I counted eight eight times that I seen you hit the ground in three races is that is that correct you went up the side of some jumps and and like landed oh, on yeah. a tough block um, yeah I landed on a tough block in practice mm. uh, was it rhythm or some whoops or yep. something I, I think I, it was I round I two on no a tough block in practice of the uh, second one. Yeah. second one i did that i forgot about that one yeah that so, was just kind of a rollout one <laughs> that was just kind of a rollout just yeah that yeah. was an easy one hey so uh, specifically for the crash in practice at, at the third round um you you talked about how banged up you were give me a percentage of strength i i i'm assuming that you you're you at that point you just weren't overall if you you know 100 percent is great what percentage strength were you down that when you when you when you came up a little short it was like you just didn't have that extra ability to to keep the bike under you and then you just kind of went uh oh i better lay this thing over and try to you know not 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 hit this triple full bore 
Yeah, I uh, I don't really know. Like, I can't. It's hard to put a number on it. It's almost like a my my leg is was the biggest part. My it's my groin that I'm dealing with. Oh, okay. Um, and so know. like, I I felt like I could ride properly. Other than like I'm, on my left hand turns, I couldn't really put my leg out. That was something that I was you know, but I. I can ride without doing that. And, um, I was fine. And like, I felt like I was strong enough. Like I, I hit the whoops good. Like that's one of the biggest leg strength things that you have to do. But when I landed super hard, like my, that, that hit hitting my leg almost like shocked my whole leg uh -huh. where it was already injured. And it like, it almost did what happened when I crashed originally, like made it feel like, um, like I had no movement in it. Like it just, it went dead almost. So, I, I seriously, I couldn't really, my legs didn't really even grip the bike after I cased it like that. It gave it such a, such a shock and sharp, like hit that it almost like paralyzed it. And that was kind of what happened. Um, there was, I mean, and there was a lot of talk that, you know, oh, I, that it was, wasn't safe for me to be on the track because I was, you know, um, so messed up and that, that's not the case at all. Like, there's there's a lot of times when 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 racers race and not at 100 percent like that's yeah that's part of our job yeah that's common <laughs> i think yeah. i think more guys are not 100 percent as as guys are 100 percent totally hey, cameron totally. did you ever get a chance to watch uh ricky's rookie year in 125 supercross you talk about it being debatable some... whether or not it was safe for him to be on the there track with other riders here we go um real quick and i want i want jeff to ask questions i mean hell i was i was i was talking about no. you on, on the broadcast most of the week but one one question i had and and i want to land the plane on this because you probably don't want to talk about it but is there when when you and march banks were teammates did you guys get along was there was there ever any issues i wasn't aware of any issues that you guys had i mean was it cool yeah, I mean, I've I've known Garrett for forever. I, I we trained together at Club MX when. Um, oh, really? You know, super mini. Yeah, so oh, wow. we've known each other for a while, and uh, we were fine. Um, we rode together a lot, uh, you know, at the tracks and stuff. Testing. He lived in California. I lived in California. So, um, yeah, I mean, I don't I don't really have any issues with anyone on the track. Really, we didn't. Uh, we weren't best friends, but we we were cordial together and. And, uh, even, you know, when I can, when I sense energy from someone else, that's maybe not the best I can, I can be pretty positive and, and, uh, bring it up. So we're, we're fine. And, and, um, you know, Garrett, Garrett's a good rider. Like he's, you know, he's fast and he's got a lot of talent, but, uh, you know, and yeah, I don't have anything, I don't have anything against Garrett. And I, I was just curious because, you know, like sometimes and Jeff, you, you know how it is like, situations like that when we're in the moment and we're calling the race and like if there was some underlying issue that we didn't know about then then we we kind of look like we're we're misinformed like hey well these guys got into it at practice you didn't see it this is where this stemmed from and i was just curious i'm like after the fact i'm like dude i wonder if they had a beef that that we weren't aware of and i was trying to think i'm like well they were teammates last year and I never knew of any anything. So, all right, yeah. I mean, yeah, no, not it really. It doesn't surprise me. You know what I mean? I mean? So, yeah, but you I, you had to be going. Come on, man! Like at the end of that race, like this is all I need. Like, yeah. Oh man. Yeah, that. I mean, it was like I was. I was obviously pretty bummed. Um, there's nothing I can do about it. That, and you know, me me talking about it on the on the broadcast or to, to anyone really, it doesn't do anything positive. So, um, yeah, it's just I've made I've made mistakes and and done stuff that that I probably w wish I wouldn't have done racing too. Oh, yeah. So we all, uh, you know, I, I'm not gonna you know hold that over. And and I, I got race with the guy next in two weeks. So um, it is what it is, and I'm not gonna you know. I've seen a lot of stuff, even on social media, of things that people have said about Garrett that that I don't think's right either. You yeah, know, he's getting that, threats. You know, he's yeah, getting threats. like that's that's the thing. Like I've, I've race. dealt with. I mean, even at the first round when I had that incident with the medic, like, man, I had people messaging me on Instagram talking about how like I, I that 
they they literally wish I was hurt or that I need I deserve to break my leg or things like that. And so like I've seen I've seen it on my own social media. I've done my best to delete comments and things like that that are on my pictures talking about how you know all these things about Garrett in a negative way, which I don't need that on my stuff. Like yeah. it's it's not fair because a guy um, you know had a racing incident with another guy for them to say that he or his family deserves to to you know have death threats like that that's crazy to me that's so crazy like, for that's someone crazy. to say that there's no way that i feel yeah, like that so, they're, dude, it, that's so they're, out of line dude they were yeah, they were giving it to me bait. too it's like <laughs> yeah oh, hey, like, nobody dude, knows like, more negativity think, than ricky <laughs> i mean the the, I, the the warriors were on fire this week and it and it's oh, funny yeah. it's just like some of my bosses like dude you you had a great race call and i'm like well <laughs> Uh, not according to the keyboard warriors, but yeah, I mean, we're, yeah, we're going to get into that, all that. Uh, Listen, later. Rick. I, I, I'll go out and say, you know, like it was, it was a, a poor racing decision and uh, we've all made it. I've made plenty of them. Jeff, you've made plenty of them. Cameron, we've, sure you have, I guarantee but, all yeah. three of us have made a conscious decision like that, that, that it totally. wasn't like, Oh, it was kind of in the moment. Like we intentionally did it. And then it, 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 I, I promise you as the older you get, the more that you start to realize, man, I really don't want to race that way. But when you're yeah. in the age group, the you know, for us, it was 125s. For you guys, the 250, you know, Ricky and I, we both did. I lived through the early 90s. It was as dirty as it gets. And the early 2000s were crazy dirty. Um, and then what was interesting is is when Ricky started to, to reach his pinnacle is when the light bulb really went off like, hey, man, we we all need to ride, you know, in a, in a more respectful, like competitive way. Um, a mutual respect. Yeah, mutual totally. respect. And that doesn't always happen. It takes, you know, sometimes it takes some years to to actually some years of failure to learn that. I mean, yeah. I, I did, you know, so. Yeah. And that's that's why I, you know, I don't have, you know, I'm not going to go off and say anything negative about about Garrett or and and like I said, like he doesn't he doesn't deserve a lot of the stuff he's getting on social media. Um and just a lot of the things that people say, it's, it's pretty crazy. It's like, I don't know how, you know, you can consider yourself a fan of our sport and then um, talk about one of our athletes that way. Like at the end of the day, he is, he's one of the best, best guys to get on a dirt bike and race a supercross track. So, um, you know, and a very large, very small percentage of people who ride dirt bikes can, can do what Garrett can do on a dirt bike. So like be a fan of that, you know, instead of, bringing the negativity i i, I want to you know see the positive in it you know hey so. hey somebody somebody told me that on the podium on tuesday night's race that there were fans that were booing you is that true or was that because i thought everybody was applauding your effort after all that Did yeah you, i i is uh, that fake news yeah i didn't i didn't hear any booze i okay. <laughs> this the stadium was pretty going pretty crazy actually which all right all was, right it was pretty cool but um yeah it was it seemed like everyone was pretty stoked well that was a, that was a one hell of a week in a lot of ways i know you lost some points you're 22 down now yeah third correct um and there's and there's one round left um obviously you know 26 points um and uh, a bad race by uh by uh cooper and lawrence and and all of a sudden you could be the champion um have you been able to to regroup yet i know you you've got a weekend off here um you know or you're still just kind of down here going okay i've got two weeks to get myself healthy and get my mind healthy to get back into it where where would you say that you're at in that process um yeah we're like at the beginning of it for sure i've been <laughs> uh yesterday was monday and i was at therapy all day uh just you know getting myself built back up and and uh you know getting all the little little nagging things healed up i've been with dr g a lot and and uh same thing today i did you know some swimming and whatnot trying to get my get my leg feeling better but um for sure i think towards the end of this week we'll start building back up, hopefully get on the bike. And, and, uh, you know, I, I really want to go to Salt Lake and, and close the season out on a high note. I felt like, you know, my season was going so well and, and, you know, there's a lot of things that I don't want to, you know, take it and just be a negative because 
man, I, I, my, one of the biggest things I worked on this year was consistency and being, being solid each time, which, so Atlanta was a big bummer for me. And that was a, almost a disappointment because that's like a big thing that I've been really focused on this year. And I mean, out of eight races, I've been on the podium six times. Um, I think I've won five or six heat races. So like, it's been a huge step for me. I've, I've only had two podiums to my career before this season. So it's been a huge jump and I want to, I want to like, you know, take those positives in and continue to build off of them rather than just be like, yeah, I crashed a bunch in, in this 10 day span. I crashed so many times, but at the same time for the last two months of racing, like I've been there each time and I felt I, I'm pretty happy with that, you know? So there's definitely so many things that I can still learn and, and so many things that I need to be better at to, to be able to, you know, continue to fight for these championships and wins, but that's what we're working on. Hey, you mentioned, um, um, going to doc G Gubernick. Um, I've seen, he's got that, uh, he's got that one treatment where it, it it's like a snake thing that they wraps around like the white thing. It's, it's like yeah. magnetic or whatever. I, I'm assuming he has an extra large one and he just wrapped you like a mummy. Is that, is that what he did? Just went from head to toe and just completely wrapped you for a bit with I, I that. wish i wish he had a big one i have to just take the other one and just go to each body part and i'm yeah he's uh time consuming he's a saver though like he he helped me out a lot in in atlanta too it was it was awesome that he was able to be there because um yeah i ended up in his hotel room quite a bit ricky i think that i i mean i'm just like i said at the at the top of the show i'm uh, like sometimes you got to take a step back and, and just look at what you've been able to accomplish. And, uh, and as a whole, and you said it yourself, you've had a spectacular year. I think there's a lot to learn from all the right things that you've done and, and a lot to learn from, from, from what happened in Atlanta. Uh, it sure. sucks that that's the way that one has to learn. I, I've been down that road, certainly my first, uh, my rookie season of the, of the premier class in Supercross, dude, it sucked. But years later, I learned what not to do. And, and, and sometimes, you know, people learn a different way, but um, like I said, you and I talked about this. Sometimes you got to take a step back and look at, look at what you look at what you've done and the progress that you made. And Hey, you, you, you want to go out with a bang, like you said, in Salt Lake city at the, uh, at the shootout and you still could get second in this championship, go out with a win. And, he, yeah. and, and I mean, and mathematically you still have a shot. Um, so it's an outside shot, but dude, second, second ain't nothing to sneeze at, man. Yeah, totally. And that's, that's honestly another thing, like, um, you know, there's two points separating Hunter and I, so now I'm kind of like, yeah, I want to, you know, I want to get, at least I want to get second in the championship. And, and if something crazy is to happen and, and I'm still to win the championship, like that would be amazing. Like that's, that's the main goal. But, um, you know, this is, this is the first time I've ever even been, really close to contending for any sort of championship. So, um, you know, obviously there's things that I had to learn and, and there is new, new sorts of expectations and pressures that I put on myself, even not even just from, you know, a lot of people say, Oh, the team's putting all kinds of pressure on, on me, or, you know, I've seen a lot of that and, and that's not it. That's, that's not the case. I mean, you know how my team works there, uh, you know, Mitch knows that I put enough pressure on myself. He's not, there's not uh, any crazy stuff going on, you know, that people might think behind the scenes. It's, it's more uh, as a rider, you put pretty much all the pressure on yourself. You work your butt off and live your entire life for it. So then when you, when you put yourself in a position to have that opportunity to maybe do that, then like there's an extra expectation that you feel at the race. And so that, you know, that can be part of it. And, I think it's good to, for me to learn just as a person and as a racer that like, you know, what to do and what not to do. And I, I learned in Atlanta and um, I'm going to continue to learn. Yeah. Well, uh, we wish you the best. Uh, thankfully you've got a weekend off right here and you're going to get a chance to uh, try to get um, a little bit more healthy and uh, recovered. So, um, yeah. Hey, uh, we want to switch gears now. Um, uh, but, uh, before we do, we'd like to mention Fox Racing and foxracing.com, uh, all your uh, motocross gear, off-road gear, apparel, safety equipment. 
check us out over there and also uh, odigrips.com where you can find the Imig Pro Grips with Ricky chooses to run and the uh, Ricky Carmichael RC4 handlebar bin which comes in two different um, applications which I choose to run so together it's like the dynamic duo and you can check that out at odigrips.com okay so the 450 I really want to get your take on the 450 Atlanta was crazy in a lot of ways and it capped off with the end of a main event, the, the final podium. I would have not predicted on that day that Cooper Webb would have won the main event. You guys' thoughts? Anyone? Go ahead, Cameron. You tell me. Like, Jeez, yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, he's a gamer. Coop's a gamer. He is, um, you know, as a racer to like to see that and, and, uh, even, you know, how that track looked to be for him, you know, it, it may be not the, maybe not the greatest, right? Like, um, Ken was so good in the whoops and so good on the whole track. And then, you know, he, he was still great the whole night. Like he, he wrote a great main event. He had one little thing in the whoops that obviously got him a little bit, but, um, you can't take that away from Ken. And, uh, you know, it's, when you watch the broadcast, it's easy to see like those two or three guys. But what I like to look at is like Dylan Fernandez, like the ride that he had, or, you know, there's, there's guys that have such like that are riding so good and have a phenomenal ride and get maybe like eighth place. And it, that's, what's, that's, what's pretty crazy to me about that class and, and get, you know, you have to have a lot of respect for that, that class and those guys, because, you know, there's, it's just, you know, it's such a, there's so many guys at such a high level that it's impressive, but yeah, to talk about the, the first two guys, like, you know, Coop and Kenny, they're, they're, uh, they're going for it. And, and, uh, it was pretty gnarly how, how Coop made that happen. That was, that was impressive. And even the way Kenny's riding is, is really impressive. Like, so yeah, that was wow. Yeah. But you know, Cameron, Ricky, Ricky basically only wants Ken Roxon to win. It's obvious right when you listen to the broadcast and all the keyboard warriors called him out for it this week they called him out those are the same people that busted my chops for saying that i was on the uh cooper webb bandwagon you know what sucks is like is i respect all these riders all of you guys every every rider on the course just for their own personality and what their ability is on a on a dirt bike and <laughs> Let me, I was, let me, like, let me read I was just some. explaining like, dude, Ken has got to beat Cooper. That doesn't mean that I want Ken to do any better than what Cooper is doing. <laughs> I was just saying, dude, you got to pass this guy. You, you have got to respond. And how that, how that shows that I'm biased towards Ken is uh, it, it blows my mind because trust me, uh, with because of my relationship with Ken, I'm as hard on Ken Roxon as most as, as anybody. Cause I know what his ability is. And when he doesn't perform at that level, dude, my job is to, to, to give analysis on what I see and what I think the guys need to do and the positions they need to put themselves in. And I mean, Jeff, mm -hmm. you and I have this conversation all the time, Cameron, I don't know what your position is, but dude, like if, if they're not performing and there's not an underlying issue and you just go lay an egg, it's, yeah. And it's a situation where it doesn't mean that I don't like anyone or I want this guy to win more than I want that guy to win. Hey, I'm get my life isn't going to change regardless of who wins Cooper can Tomac. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah. You know? Well, so yeah. I was just like, dude, you've got, if you, if you want to keep momentum going, you can't, you can't let this dude win. I've done the same thing reverse. With, with yeah. Cooper. Yeah. You know, um, and as an analyst, you're trying to, like you're encouraging this thing to go down to the final yeah. race. You're encouraging that. But uh, one person said the way you put down Cooper Webb uh, is unacceptable. Can't hide the fact that you love Ken and hate Cooper. <laughs> like, wait, 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 what? Oh, bashing Webb, talking about Roxon is so much better. Like, dude, the, the, it's crazy how we live in this world of social media where you have this these ability to throw these things out there and you, you know Cameron I really appreciated your take on it with uh, one of your competitors with uh, March banks and all of that sort of negativity there and and um, 
you know, it's, it's totally, you know, unwarranted, but the yeah. fans are the fans. They, they, they get on the, uh, the social media and let it fly, you know? Yeah, totally. And that's like, I mean, for me, it's, um, doesn't matter what I treat, like what, how my emotions are towards any of my competitors. I know that none of the guys that line up for that main event deserve any of the negative comments that some people like have to give, because um, I know that every other dude out there is working just like I am day in day out. And like, we all put our lives to it, you know? And, and, uh, and really what we're doing is like, we're, we're doing this to it's for entertainment. It's for, for the fans to, to enjoy. So like, you know, to, to put other Duke guys down, is not, it's not cool. Like, and I've even seen, like I saw, I think after Texas people giving Ricky crap about um, not liking me, hating me because when I crashed in the whoops and I, I came across the track and, and didn't reenter in the right spot, he, he, you know, called it out. And, and I was like, dang, I, I hope, I hope that's not true that, you know, Ricky doesn't like me. I didn't take it that way. Yeah, Ricky, do you not like him? Whatever. Do you not like him? People don't understand. Like, I have have to answer, you know, and, like, like when you were going that, like, when you were going through there, I'm like, oh, dude, he probably shouldn't do that. That was my pre-thought, you know? Yeah. Because, and and then if I don't say those things, like, what my pre-thought was, and and you knew AMA was going to do that Mm -hmm. like then i get i mean jeff you know how it is you get bossed you you know you're you you have the powers that be like dude why didn't you explain to the viewers that in your thought you want well it's like that it's like the fans yeah the viewers and the fans that watch supercross live as it's happening it's like they it's like the ama official that's going to make the call is listening to ricky's comment and going oh oh i need to take another look at that like Ricky influences the call on that. No, and that's you know in my early days of of broadcasting, um, I I I always kind of like was on the fence. I I'd, I'd say well this, and then there's that, and I was kind of playing it both ways. And the bosses and the power to be, they said, look, you're you're the expert. Yes, no, good, bad. Don't be in the middle. And it's okay to have your opinion. It's also okay to be wrong and also go back and go, Hey, you know, last week, you know, I looked at it that way. Now I've had a chance to think about it, but at the time, this is how I, this is how I thought about it. But in in none of those situations where it's like, Ooh, he cut a big part of the track that's going to cost him because it does. And as the analyst, that's what you got to do. And look, we've all been there. You're at the beginning of your career. I mean, David Bailey used to be so hard on me during supercrosses. As I got older, you know, I understood it a little bit more uh, um, and all that, but um, yeah, it's a, what? Go, go ahead. No, 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 I'm saying it's, you you know, and and where I, and I'm just finally now getting over the hump. If, if the people that bag on me, (laughs) you probably like people that bag on me and, and Jeff, like I've learned so much from you, dude, I've, I've played that middle part where I'm like, ah, I probably don't want to say this because I don't want the dude to get mad at me. But then Jeff gave me some great advice and he read an article, uh, you know, halfway through your broadcasting career, uh, maybe by, uh, Chris Collinsworth had written, yeah. had written an article and he basically just said like what you you tell tell your story yeah. what you so our me. producer Chris Bond you know Bondo right he yeah. produces yeah. the show so Bondo gives me this article out of like USA Today or something and so it's from Chris Collinsworth right NFL um, analyst NBC. for years you know Hall of Fame um, all that he's my teammate man yeah and um it, it basically, he said, look, you know, I've been a broadcaster for a lot of years. He goes, and for a long time, he goes, I would, I would kind of hold back a little bit on my, on my comments in fear of that I, that I wouldn't be liked by the players, right? And mm-hmm. then he, you know, he came to this epiphany. Basically, he's like, look, uh, at my age and everything where I'm at, like, I don't really connect with these players. I, I, really don't have any friendships with him there's no reason to protect anything and like kind of you know hold back on his comments he goes and then once I just said okay I'm just going to call it like I see it right or wrong like it's okay to be wrong at times Um, if I just call it like I see it then I'm gonna then I'm gonna be a better broadcaster for it you know and so that's kind of 
you know, where you hopefully you get to as a broadcaster. Yeah. Yeah. And then and it goes to your point, Cameron, like when people are hating on me, when I, you know, and like when, when the whole Dallas situation, when I said that I knew I was going to get harp, like in the back of my mind, I'm like, Oh dude, people are going to rip <laughs> me and say, Oh, I tipped AMA off and they would have never penalize you for that. I'm like, dude, they saw exactly what happened. But if I hadn't called that, you know, then I would be doing my job at a service. And I think like the social media thing, that's where people, they get so caught up in the weeds. Like it has nothing to do with you. I've been praising you all season long. Yeah. yeah you know, I totally. did the same thing for heart wrap. Remember when heart wrapped came yeah, through yeah, there right and he took out that. or yeah. no, no, Clayson came in there and took him out. And I'm like, Dude, you, you can't, can't grab a handful of throttle. Yeah. At a certain point, you have to let off the throttle and stay between uh be, tw- stay between the track markets so cameron right yeah, now is your chance and i know grant langston isn't on on the call but i called some races with you when you were younger you got carmichael right here i'll we will represent grant langston has there ever been a moment on a broadcast that you felt like you were unfairly judged you did, speak now or forever hold your peace <laughs> oh, dude you you're on the hot huh? seat cameron <laughs> dude i i uh I can't think of a time that 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 uh, that I ever really uh, felt that you know I've gotten. I think there was there was a time uh, no because there was a time in Atlanta a couple of years ago when I I I took out Kyle Peters pretty bad, um, and uh, the way it all happened it looked very very like very on purpose. And it Delicious. wasn't, it was just me kind of being a, a goon squirreling out. And, uh, <laughs> but it was fairly, it was like, wow, that was not good. You know, um, I don't remember who, I think it might've been Ricky was like that. That was not good. That was, you know, that was, you know, shouldn't have done that. And I'm like, yeah, fair enough. That was not good. Like, you know, I got in yeah. trouble for it. I, I got put on a year of probation actually for it, you know, but yeah. You'll know, uh, I mean, you know, miss my rear break uh, defense didn't, didn't hold yeah no it was not even that i don't even think i i like i'm not the guy that's like oh yeah you know this happened or make some weird excuse for being kind of making a dumb decision on the track i was just like yeah i, I made the stupid decision like that's that's all it boiled down to hey you know even of- even like uh the you know last weekend when the first red flag did thing like i can you know be like oh well you know it was this fault or that fault but at the end of the day like you know, I jumped into the tough blocks and I should have landed on that tough block and hit my brakes and just fell onto the tough block. But that's not what I did. I landed on the tough block and tried riding out of it. And I ended up in the middle of the track and, and caused a, a, a pile up. Like, um, you know, I could, I could easily go in defense mode and say, Oh, that wasn't my fault. Blah, yeah. blah, blah. Like, but it was, I, I caused that crash and, you know, hindsight 2020, I should have, smashed my brakes when i hit that tough block and fell off the side of the track but instead i i tried staying in it and i you know i thought there was a chance i could continue to go straight like so that's that's what happened hey same thing happened to uh not same thing same situation happened with uh barsha and coop at was it i think atlanta one do you remember when cooper was trying to go up the inside and oh yeah section remember yeah and- I mean, he was playing with about the same amount of of room and space as you were. However, it wasn't, you know, it just wasn't on the start. And dude, it's yeah. not, I mean, it's not, it wasn't malicious. You made a mistake and yeah, it sucks. So, it sucks what happened, but dude, it's, you know, anyhow. It's racing. That's right. That, that is racing. Dude, I appreciate, you've been, we, we really appreciate your honesty. And I think a lot of people appreciate your honesty, your grit, your, your ride at a that uh, A2, I want to say, Atlanta 2 was, was that say A1. Incredible. You can say A2, but you can't say A1. Yeah, it was, uh, it was courageous. I think you taught a lot of people, kids. You set a great example. And, Thank uh, you. It was cool to watch, dude, and we're proud of you. And uh, most importantly, dude, pat yourself on the back for how well you've come this, how well you've done this season. And, and uh, I know you got to feel good about it. Don't, don't harp on yourself for this weekend. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that a lot. Well, in a in a in a world full of a lot of snowflakes, especially uh, your people your age, uh, you are no snowflake, and uh, you're one tough dude. And we appreciate you 
being on uh, Real Talk 447 here with uh, Ricky and I. One last final word. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you guys for having me on. And, and uh, yeah, can't wait to, to go racing and hopefully give Ricky something to talk about here in a couple weeks in Salt Lake, something good. I'm, I'm going to go so I can see it. So, all right, Cameron McAdoo, thanks for joining us. Ricky, as always, appreciate uh, your insight. And thanks to all the fans for listening. If you haven't subscribed here on YouTube, go ahead and click that button, the like button, the thumbs up, and all that stuff. Uh, follow us uh, on Instagram. Uh, it's at Real Talk 447 Official, I think, something like yeah. that. Um, yeah. Cameron Mac at Cameron McAdoo at Ricky Carmichael, all that on the social media stuff. So, uh, once again, thanks to foxracing.com and odigrips.com for everything they do. So, make sure that you support them. And as always, we're going to take you away with the Andrew McKeague band and this old lie. Thanks, everybody. Yeah.